Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. It is, uh, oh, I think it's about 6.30-ish in the morning, and uh, I am dragging badly. I've gotten up at about 1.30 the last three mornings and really haven't been able to get back to bed. So it's finally catching up with me. I haven't left the house yet. <sighs> Pardon me. Um, but this video is going to be a lot of what was going on yesterday as far as the job site. And, uh, you know, I had one person tell me that, uh, he really liked the videos when I do walkthroughs and stuff. And so that's what took place yesterday. And we're getting close and down to the wire on this project. I'm going to sit down this morning and figure out, you know, how much time is needed for each thing that's going to have to get done. Um, I'm, I know for sure I'm going to sub some stuff out like the driveway because um, an excavator is going to be needed. There's some roots in the driveway area and I need that to uh, be dug and uh, those roots get out of there so that over time it doesn't break the driveway. Um, and then it, I might end up getting a guy to do the sheetrock um, just be in uh for the room that we're on right now just because it's much quicker and so the thing about it is is that you know it's not always prudent to keep that project in-house financially or time and you know we're looking at him the customer being able to move in september 1st so you know you figured you got what 27 you know about 67 days and so every day there's going to need to be a task on there that's getting performed, so to speak, so that we can go ahead and get it done. And like today, um, I was planning on, I got yesterday some of the furnace okay. for doing the hardy lap siding on the outside of uh, part of the house, but not going to be able to do it today because it's raining and uh, that really sucks. So you lose some time there. Um, but the bathroom is just about 100% completed. We just, we got to put the door up and then a few pieces of trim. And today I'll go order the kitchen cabinets so we can get those in. They should be in in about two weeks. Um, one of the things that we can also start doing is painting the outside of the house. And, um, you know, we can get that ready in the meantime, so to speak. So there's things that can be done. Um, you know, and the thing about it is, is just to keep the whole machine moving forward so that no time gets lost that wasn't productive. And, you know, it's a funny thing. A lot of people see, you know, come to me and, uh, you know, I post a lot of pictures of before and after and people think that I'm a flipper and I've only flipped two houses and, and virtually did no work to either one of those. Um, you know, I've always been a buy and hold guy and, uh, they'll come and say, oh man, I want to do this and everything. And then, you know, and, and they're married and uh, they say that. And I'm like, man, I'm here to tell you, dude, um, flipping a house, doing renovations can be absolutely brutal on a couple. And, um, you know, I don't recommend something as big as what you all are undertaking. And, uh, oh, no, no, we can handle it and handle it. You know, eight weeks into it, they're ready to get a divorce. Man, can you buy this house from us? Can Can you help us out? We're about to you know, we, we, oh my God, you're right, you're right, you know, and um, so it's not for the faint of heart. I will tell you this is that the first two weeks you make a lot of progress and then from week three to about week 12, depending on how in depth the project is, you're not gonna make any progress. And then it's like the last two weeks it all starts to come together quick. And uh, so that's uh, just take a look and love to hear your comments and feedback and everything like that. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm real happy with this house and, um, the thing I'm really looking forward to is getting on my house and doing my house. And, um, you know, cause it, um, one of the things that became apparent with working with my coach is, is that I don't live in a life with some of my values and I like nice houses. I like them up to date. I like them tight. I like them looking fresh. And uh, my house is not that. I am the typical mechanic drives the worst car, cobbler's kids got the worst shoes, all that stuff. So, um, but we're probably gonna take 
uh, about two months off after this job is completed. And what I mean by that is, is that we won't do anything that costs major money. Um, no renovations or anything. We'll do a lot of demo work. We'll be doing a lot of painting on the properties. And the whole reason for that is, is to build cash for, cash back up. You know, um, this is like, you know, today I go to Home Depot, that's a $1,200 trip. You know, uh, Sunday was a $3,600 trip. Um, you know, kitchen cabinets is gonna be, oh, probably five or 6,000. Um, you know, so there's, the driveway is gonna be five grand. So it's, you know, there's gonna be at least another 12, 15,000 that gets spent on this before it's done. So it's a very cash intensive um, endeavor when you're doing these type of renovations. And so, and you definitely need to keep your eye on the money going out because uh, if you don't, then it goes just a whole lot quicker and everything. It is not as easy as people would have you believe. And if you drive by my house, there ain't no Lamborghini in the driveway, ain't no Ferrari or anything like that. I haven't reached that point where that's affordable yet. Technically, I could. However, it would choke the business, it would choke me, and I'd be asking myself, what in the hell were you thinking? And um, as much as I hate to, it's looking like I'm going to have to buy another truck myself. So we're faced with that. Hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the video. Um, if you need to get in touch with me, there's an email in the description. Send me your phone number. You can have 15 minutes of my time for free. I'll talk with you, whatever you want to do, um, and we can go from there. Have a wonderful day. Well, we're headed to Home Depot right now. Got to get a shower kit, a couple other things, and a bunch of hardy one by four. Um, we are going to uh, stop by a convenience store and get us a cold drink first because I need to replenish. Carla's the only person who carries espresso in her suitcase right there, whole espresso <laughs> machine in there. And it's good on the job site, that's for sure. Dump trailers, whatever it is their one truck show and I mean there's nothing wrong with that and I understand you know uh, money's an issue but I also know that there's a lot of things that I could do that I'm not the best craftsman I'm not the best uh, planner I'm not a, uh, good at a lot of things I'm okay at a bunch of things and I'm great at some things but good at a bunch no however I can handle money and so I decided, you know, what you're going to do is, is you're going to get a backup truck. And we have done that, and it's proven to be extremely beneficial, um, you know. And at times, uh, you know, Carla's truck's gone down, so if she needs something to be able to drive back and forth to work, boom, here you go. Um, other people have needed something, boom, here you go. Um, you know, but like I said, it uh, if you're not pulling, it gets about 10. If you're pulling, it's about 7 to 8. Um, and it'll pass everything but a gas station, that is for sure. Still rides good, ACs pops in. Um, I love the truck, I really do. I like driving it, big seats in it, and everything like that. It's extremely comfortable. Um, unfortunately, these days they are making consoles bigger and bigger on trucks, and so it is a lot more squeezy. And of course, they put the drink holders in the top of them, so you have to have it down. To be able to put your drink and i'm all about having a cold drink with me while i'm riding around because we're out here in this heat trying to beat it so this old chevy right here it's got a rebuilt title on it it don't matter to me i use it as my backup and actually it's used for uh because uh we've had some break-ins here and so we uh put that up there to keep people from going inside that container right there um, but this truck right here it's got the 8.1 that's 496 um, it'll pass everything but a gas station, I'm here to tell you. Um, I had a gooseneck in it in case I do any pulling like that. Um, I've used it for dump trailers. It is four-wheel drive. It runs great. It's got, I think, 230,000 miles on it, 240. Um, it's a great backup truck. And when you're in business, you know, and this was when I was doing the dump trailers especially, if we ever had a situation you only get to tell customers no once, maybe twice at best, and then they're going somewhere else. And so um, total, I'm all in on this purchase price and then had to do some work on it. I think six, 6,500. 
Um, it's a small price to pay, in my opinion, to keep your business going. Um, a lot of times people in this industry, whether it's remodeling, this is, you know, it'd be ideal to have something that was, you know, when you really get down to it, it's like, you know, what you really need is 28 foot trailer. Okay. Well, that's just not practical. Me personally, 14 foot trailers are a lot easier to get into. Some neighborhoods around here have real tight cul-de-sacs still able to make the turn. And when you're running an eight foot long bed truck, like I am, uh, it certainly makes a difference on the turning radius. Now, my other truck that I have for the backup is this right here is basically my, my carry bag that, uh, I take all the time. You get some 10 in one screwdrivers, some wire crimpers, some cutters, and then for the big wire, and then you gotta have some wire strippers right there. And nothing's complete without a set of clines. And I know y'all think these are for a wire and everything. They're not, they're actually a hammer. That's, you ask any electrician, that's a hammer. And then you got some big screwdrivers right there. A um, little punch. Let's see what we got down in here. You got a that's the multimeter right there. You got a crescent wrench, um, some Allen wrenches, channel locks. Got some utility knives right there. Um, always put my uh, tape measure in there when it's not on my side. And uh, we got some air gauges and everything like that. So um, some bits for the impact driver and drill. Most of the time I could fix pretty much what I come across right here with this, you know The other thing is is that you know when you're carrying the tool trailer like I am the number seven cam loads were totally wiped out on it and So ended up putting a new motor in it. That was ten grand and generally speaking They say the transmissions on these go out at about a hundred and fifty thousand um, Guess what I got about eight thousand more to hundred and fifty um so, and I bought a brand new, I think it was a 2021, 3500 Dodge Cummins diesel, high output, 70 more horsepower, had the ASIN transmission in it and everything, and uh, uh, first 200 miles, the computer goes out. That sucked. So then, um, the diesel particulate filter goes out at about 40,000, and... What they would give me on the truck and what I owed was $9,000 difference. I cut them a check, said it's yours, you can have it. I was done and I, after this, I'll never own another Dodge product. Just me personally, I know a lot of people that swear by that Cummins. I must have got a Monday or a Friday truck. That's all there is to it. So I think that the next purchase is gonna be as a big Ford or Chevy gas burner. Probably the six, I think they make a six seven and a six six or whatever. Um, but they seem to be having some pretty good luck with them. Um, you know, the horsepower is the same as with the diesels, but the problem is, is the torque is half as much. Like that Dodge diesel I had, it almost had like 950 pounds of foot, foot pounds of torque, you know, and uh, this, this Dodge only has like 400 and something, you know, it's a huge difference. And, um, you know, a big gas burner doesn't have $800 a month in oil changes and maintenance and everything that you're having to do. And some people do their own oil changes and everything. I just don't have the time to be doing that. Or And I'm not set up. I don't have a rack. I don't want to, you know, worry about having um, oil pans and all that kind of stuff. Then when you do it, you got to dispose of it and everything. I just assume take it to somebody and then they call me an hour or two later and say, come pick it up and it's done. So, you know, that's just my way of doing some things. And, uh, you know, this whole thing is about getting your time back and getting freedom, you know. Um, I'd much rather go cut grass than uh, change oil, just me. So, there you have it. That's it right there. It's got the 6.4 liter. Um, it pulls good. I probably have pulled 13, 14,000 pounds with it. Um, I had to put a new motor in it at 70,000 miles. Well, I'll show you the tool trailer. I'm standing at it right here. This is the door. Um, these things are absolutely crucial. The only thing that I would really consider doing differently is getting a service truck. One of those that's got the 
most of them are a nappied bed, uh, but it's got all the doors on it and everything like that. And usually the inside, you know, 49 inches. It's big enough most of the time to be able to get a piece of plywood, sheetrock or something like in there and then close a short tailgate on them and everything like that. Um, the advantage to that is, is you got all your tools and everything and then you don't have a trailer with you. Um, this rig that I'm running, the bad part is, is that uh, even though I use my work truck as my personal vehicle and everything or drive it on the off time and everything, um, you know, I got a ladder rack on it and two big black toolboxes on the outside uh, or on the edge of the bed. If you do this kind of work, and you don't have a seven inch little table uh, chop saw like that, you really need to get one because they're just so handy. And the big chop saw is on a stand and it's big and it's cumbersome and you really don't wanna set it up unless you're gonna do a lot of cuts. And so that right there is the ticket, especially doing shoe molding or uh, baseboard, really good. This right here, that's an excellent piece of equipment as well. That will save you a lot of time and trouble. Boom, battery done, sawing off two by fours, doing some framing and everything instead of having to pull out a big circular saw and everything like that. They just make it a little bit easier. All right, now we are almost 100% done with the bathroom. It is fully functional. The sink is working. Carla mounted that today. She set the commode as well. Let's hope she. Okay. Whew. Didn't want that thing to be stop stopping up like that. And um, but yeah. So and then we had to get a door that's 26 inches wide, and I had to special order it. So that's why it's taking a little bit of time to get that. Um, but here it is. I mean, it, you know, when you walked in, there was a cast iron sink hanging out the wall. You had to go around it. The commode was right there. The bathtub was here to here. And then there was a closet right there. And to me, it just didn't have a good flow because you had to go around and then to get to the commode and everything. And so I wanted to mix it up and everything like that. So that's what we did. And uh, this is the product and uh, I am really, really liking it. We'll end up putting a mirror right there. That's the way you uh, beat the heat around here. That right there, my friend, bad mamma jamma. That thing will go through anything. I think that's the biggest steel demo saw they make. I might be wrong. But that thing right there, whoo, I sure would hate to hit any part of your body with it while it's full stick. I'd hate to, it, it, it's just bad mamma jamma. That's all there is to it. Now, we got the shower pan set. This thing was out of level three different ways. And so we ended up having to get about two inches of thin set. We spread it down, made a bed, and then set that down into it. Kind of leveled it up, tapped it with a, um, rubber mallet and boom, it's done. So now we drove this, shot it in today, and then we'll frame it up. Have an opening right here. There'll be a barn door that'll slide that way. There'll be a little wall right here. And then there's gonna be an 18 inch vanity right there. Commode, there's gonna be a corner cabinet right here. There'll be an outlet to be able to plug razors and uh, different grooming accessories in and everything like that. Um, so the shower manifold will get mounted right there. We'll go ahead and this thing's got three, it's uh, inserts, three inserts that go in, they lock in, um, and then you fasten them and screw them in at the top. We'll end up opening up the back wall and mount the shower mold or the shower manifold from back there so that we have access um, because you're not gonna be able to get to it from this side, so to speak, and everything. Um, it's coming along. We're over 50% there. This is the cubby hole where the washer and dryer stacker unit's gonna go. Um, we'll end up having to hook it up with a gap. More than likely, we're gonna put Carla back there and then she'll do it and then we'll get her to climb out over everything. Oh, there, there's Carla. She, she's gonna do it. Say hi. Representing uh, she, Jack Link. Word, she's <laughs> representing Jack Link. Paid endorsement right there. And uh, so it is coming along.
That was a little bit much. step-by-step step. we just about got the whole bath done and the commodes hooked up Carla did an awesome job she's got the vanity hooked up everything's going we need to get a tub spout um, and then we need to get uh, the door and had to get a special door 26 inch door we we're getting this wall ready to do hardy lap siding and we're gonna bust this up it's in bad shape looks horrible we're gonna get it out of here so that we can pour a new one when it gets time because we're gonna end up doing a new driveway as well both of these runners will be gone and then from that edge right there up and then that'll be gone these two will be gone and then from this corner all the way to there that'll be one big slab right there hey there we've been steady getting it today it's humid it's only probably i don't know 80 85 degrees but it's probably 110 with the humidity and everything like that so um we've just been uh putting it together today and we'll see